think my earliest memories are of him being violent towards me and towards other, other people in the couch. I was kept in the house all the time and I wasn't allowed to go out, so I didn't, I didn't know anything else. I couldn't, I couldn't bear living like that. I'd rather die than be free. For Katie Davies, a simple walk in the park is something she once dreamed of. Born into a cruel sect, she was kept in captivity for three decades. Her father is Aravindan Balakrishnan, who founded the Workers' Institute, once based on Maoist ideology, but soon characterised by violence and fear. It was not so much Marxist and Maoist as a cult of valour as a person. So he took what he thought suited him from that ideology as well as from other things to promote himself because he's basically a narcissistic psychopath really and just wants everybody to worship him and do as he says without question and he was obsessed about controlling other people. He loved violence and those totalitarian dictatorships and things, he really loved that because I think he wanted to be like that. He wanted to be like Stalin or Mao or Pol Pot where everybody just listens to him and if they don't then they, he can kill them without, with impunity. I mean, when, when I was a child I was taught that he knows everything, he's God, he's the ruler of the universe and everything he says is correct. And did you ever question it as a child or as a teenager? Not as a child, because I didn't know anything else, though I didn't like it sometimes. But when, I, when there was violence, it was often said that that was to help it to improve. I used to have to sing the songs in praise of him. And I used to have to write, spend about two hours in the morning writing. We used to stand around and listen to him as he gave lectures. Sometimes he would target someone or another, either me or somebody else in the house. And the whole lecture would be about shouting at that person and denigrating that person. She lived not just in fear of Balakrishnan, but also his fictitious, omnipotent mind control machine, Jackie. If I did something wrong, well, others and me, he, we would be killed by Jackie, but that if he intervenes by slapping us and beating us and cursing us and things, then Jackie would think that, that enough has been done and not kill us, so we should be thankful that he's hurting us and being violent and whatever he was doing because we were being saved from Jackie's wrath. Shut away in a bedroom for 30 years, her isolation was extreme, kept even from knowing that one of the people she lived with was her mother. She later learned it was Sean Davies, who died in 1997 after falling from an open window. When, while she was alive, there was no affection between us, so it was not like I missed her when she passed away. In fact, in a way, when she, after she fell from the window, things got better. It's, it's, I mean, it sounds really strange and it's not nice to say that, but because she was one of the worst, as is in many cults, family relationships and that sort of thing is not encouraged because it's seen as detrimental to following the cult leader. So because she was my mum, she was like trying to go out of her way to prove to my dad that she puts him before me. But Bala robbed us of that connection. From all I've heard from her family, she was a very nice person. But the cult turned her into a shadow of her former self and made her into something that she was not. So I didn't ever really know her as she truly was. The women in the collective, and Bala as he was known, were her only points of human contact. Katie never went to school, had friendships or another child to play with. In some, one of the, some of the houses we lived, there was neighbours had children and if the children came out to play and sometimes they used to look through the fence and look at me and those with me used to say that they are fascist agents 
trying to lure me away from the collective so that they can kill me. And I used to feel suicidal as well, many times. I remember feeling suicidal at the age of six for the first time. Katie tried to escape, but in one of many missed opportunities the authorities had to help her over the decades, the police sent her back to her captor. And I told them that I had run away from home, and long and short of it is they persuaded me to, to call him and to go back home. Why did they send me back? It was a bank holiday. Eight years later, she finally did escape with the help of a charity. Her life was in immediate danger with untreated type 1 diabetes. I would have died, no debate about it. Well, I would have died anyway. Even if I hadn't died of diabetes, I would have committed suicide because I just couldn't bear living like a, this is really a non-person and a, worse than an animal. I couldn't, couldn't bear living like that. I'd rather die and be free. On that day, Friday, October 25th, when Bala and Chandra went out shopping as usual, we, we walked out. How did that feel? Best feeling in the world. Free for the first time ever. And I never thought that they would ever come, and it did. And did you realise at the time that this was it, that you were leaving, that you would not go back to that life? Certainly, yes. So you weren't going to let anybody send you back no. this time? I was scared a bit when I came out thinking that what if they come back and find me and then they make up a story and that somehow that it was not the way I said it was and then those whoever was with me would send me back but no, once, once it was, I was out I was free. Now Katie has embarked on the long task of learning ordinary life for the first time. When I first came out, I had no sense of direction at all. I wasn't able to find my way around, even hardly just down the road. And it couldn't cross the road or take public transport or anything like that. Just being able to walk out the door on my own <laughs> and walk down the street. and make friends with people, talk to people without permission and say what I want without fear of being killed or cursed or whatever and wear what I want to wear and pierce my ears, <laughs> dye my hair, just small little things but it's, it's just so, just so amazing.